Hey everybody, welcome to Harmony and welcome to our session today. My name is Russ from Zeppelin and I am joined by the fantastic Roger Rahatki from BP. Roger, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here with you, Russ. Awesome. Well, let's get started straight away. I'd love for you to introduce yourself to the folks at home. Uh, tell them a little bit about where you're from and what you do. Hey, thanks so much, Russ. Um, I am Roger Rahatke. I'm the Vice President and Global Head of Design at BP and oddly um, have the unique privilege and honor of being the first design leader in BP's 100-year history and even designer for that matter, which is uh, extremely exciting. Uh, I have um, been able to build a practice here called HXD, which is our human experience design group that looks after a, uh, user experience, UX, CX, and EX. And um, and yeah, BP had reached out to me at the end of 2019 and uh, asked me to come over here and uh, set up this practice. And uh, it's been really exciting so far. Awesome. And I know you've got a wealth of experience b before BP as well. Tell us a little bit more about your background. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I've spent the last 25 years in the design space in B2B. B2C, B2B2C, agency side, brand side, and really everything in between uh, from television and film to uh, all the digital experiences that uh, kind of begin to emerge over time uh, as, you know, in mobile and social, uh, as well as even in SaaS software and leading design at certain types of companies in the global space like Motorola and others. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you also have uh, an IMDB uh, profile as well. So if anyone wants to catch your uh, movie career, they can look you up on there, right? Yeah, I mean, there's not much there. But yes, of course, they could uh, see some of the television and film that I used to be involved in for sure and, and still try to keep up with when I can. Nice, nice. Well, let's bring, bring things back to the present day. Um, to many, BP might not seem like a big brand, uh, a big design brand company, but the company's got quite an important role in society. And you, you're talking a lot about humanizing design and, and especially given the important role that uh, BP plays is in the energy uh, industry. Can you tell us a little bit about how BP is aiming to become net zero neutral by uh, 2050 and, and what that means for BP's design uh, business? Yeah, no, it's a great question, Russ, and thanks so much for asking. Um, and you're right, you know, a lot of times, and including myself, uh, you know, may, we may not have thought of brands like this in the design space per se, but, mm -hmm. um, but actually, you'd be quite surprised, uh, as much as I was. Um, BP had reached out to me at the end of 2019 on LinkedIn and said, hey, we see what you're doing. Would you consider coming over here and you know, starting and building a practice of design here, um, or at least building it. And, and I, I didn't realize at the time that I actually was going to be the first, uh, not only um, design leader, but even designer formally badged and titled in BP. <clears throat> but that didn't mean they didn't have design. As a matter of fact, they had lots of design. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, you know agencies and uh, third parties uh, doing design here, um, and some of it was good, some of it was just different or disparate. But but um, a lot of it really seemed um, good effort, good heart, but disconnected. And so there were lots of designs, but nobody doing design, you know, big design. And uh, what are what are our standards? What are how do we approach design? And what's the practice of design? How do we set up that foundation? And I felt very privileged uh, to and honored to be able to to start that and do that. And so we established um, multiple disciplines here of design um, and, and uh, product design, uh, research, um, uh, service design, digital content design, uh, design engineering, which combines design and code, looks after our design system, uh, design ops, uh, now business design, design integration and change management uh, is even part of that as well. We even have a studio that we started um, and several um, locations around the globe and stuff. So it's very exciting to see that. But, uh, but the way I looked at it at the beginning was um, when they reached out to me, I was surprised, like, like most of you would be and coming from a design and tech world and background. And, and, uh, but I knew that there were really smart people here. I knew, uh, my dad had been in the engineering world for many years and, and uh, I thought, wow, you know what, they're, you know, not only they're really smart people, but, but they, um, uh, they're doing big things, but I wasn't quite sure exactly all that they were doing. And so when I looked into it further, I was amazed. Uh, there's, robots going up walls and through pipes and underwater and fleets of drones and AR and AI and VR and XR and MR and all this really cool stuff there and digital twins and 3D uh, modeling and um, you know, really, really advanced technologies. Uh, but, uh, but, but one of the things I saw at all those companies and, and, uh, that I was at before and in my design career, including even television and film, they all had the same challenge. And that was how do you reach people and how do you put people at the center of the equation? 
right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, knowing that there's real people with these real heartbeats on the other ends of all these digital screens and devices, uh, how do we make sure that we can connect with them and, you know, meet their needs and solve their challenges? And BP was no different. So um, it, it just happened to be on one of the largest uh, scales uh, I'd ever seen, to be honest. Wow. Um, to kind of go a little bit further into that, uh, you know, BP uh, was, you know, obviously they're a global fortune 10, although they may not be known, quote unquote, for design. Um, yeah. <clears throat> they've had a huge impact around the world. And a lot of these companies have my uh, uh, one of my cousins is uh, on my mom's side, who's Hispanic and my mom's uh, Hispanic. Uh, she lives in South America and said that you know, BP uh, built her village many years ago. And and I started thinking about the impact of companies like this. And yeah. um, and and uh, it's been it's been really, uh, really amazing to to see that because um uh, you know, I know that there's a difference that they've made, but, uh, but there's also an opportunity for us to help them transition and BP's on a transition. As you mentioned, uh, we're marching toward net zero. So when I started, uh, at the beginning of 2020, I was in London, uh, my second week and our CEO at the time, new CEO announced that we would, we would have that mission and that aim and, and five aims to help us get there and five aims to help, um, the world get there. And I knew I was in the right place because I was able to figure out how I can combine design and sustainability uh, together. And so that became a, a, almost a mission. And, uh, and it is our mission today, how we harness human experience design to reimagine energy for people and planet. And uh, so when I set up the HXD practice, you know, that combines UX, CX, and EX, that employee experience, along with what we're doing for sustainability, it helped us see how we could leverage design to put our planet and people on equal footing and, and see if we can help um, I do that as a company. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. Now, as a layperson, I drove to my gas station at the end of the road, which is a BP gas station, you'll be pleased to know. And uh, I fill up my car. Now, as, as someone who's not inside of BP, to hear that they have thousands of apps just is mind boggling. Can, can you help us understand a little bit more about what kind of screen designs you're building? What kind of apps uh, are you building for people? Yeah, that's no, another great question. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting because I remember in 2020 also, uh, Time Magazine came out with an article around, and actually a cover story on the 100 most influential companies in the world. And when you looked into those companies in the, in the article that they had, uh, the usual suspects were in there. You had Google, you had yeah. Amazon, uh, of course, you know, all the, all the ones that we all know and love, and uh, even Alibaba. And, and, and Google, Amazon, and Alibaba, I believe, were in a category called Titans. And within that category, Titan category, was also, interestingly enough, BP. And, um, and it, was, uh, it was interesting to begin to think about it because I thought, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is Titan design. This is design at a whole other level. Um, and people have asked me, just like you, like, what kind of design do you do? What kind of apps do you do? And, and, and the question was uh, really back to them is like, what kind of design don't we do? Uh, because what I discovered when I got here was uh, it's, uh, it, there, there's, there's such a variety. It can almost be overwhelming, but it's super exciting. Uh, it's uh, B2B, it's B2C, uh, it's B2G or B2N, business to governments, business to nations, helping whole yeah. entire cities and uh, become sustainable. Uh, it's uh, B2E, which is the enterprise software and the, uh, the, the, you know, the employee uh, experience as well. And, and everything in between. And so, um, like you said, there are literally hundreds upon hundreds, um, actually thousands of apps. Um, and um, we are you know, looking at how we can elevate the experience of all those and tie them together. Uh, the design system I mentioned that our amazing design engineering team is building, um, which is the first of its kind here, but it's also probably one of the biggest in the, in the world at some point. It will be. It's um, you know, trying to account for over 200,000 interfaces, uh, roughly, you know, just throwing some numbers out that can't give the exact numbers. But, of course, you, know, you can rough, give some rough estimates. But, you know, with that, something that large, uh, we have seen that uh, there's a massive uh, need to be able to jump into what we do in those experiences for people that are in the field, uh, that may be um, on, in wind farms, um, solar fields, that may be in our traditional business lines, uh, that may be out in the ocean. Um, we oversee. The, um, you know, even trading and shipping. Uh, you, so you have, uh, you know, financial software, there's procurement uh, software, there's, um, there's all the my, I, IT functions internally, there's even uh, employee experience as it relates to HR. But then you have all the B2C. Uh, we have um, uh, incredible stuff we're doing with BP Pulse around our EV charging networks. Uh, yep. We have, um, uh, you know, our, our traditional business lines is convenience and retail and fuel. And so that's, that's a big part of this too. But we also have um, how we help fleets in, in B2B and 
and partner with organizations that, you know, and I think this is publicly known, but uh, companies like Uber and others that, that have fleets in Amazon that um, need help with uh, being able to be um, uh, sustainable, also, uh, you know, manageable. And so we, we're, we're working uh, diligently on that. So how do we design for all of that? Uh, on top of all that, we're looking at, you know, um, you know how we uh, design for um, human interaction with, uh, with AI and robotics. Uh, we're partnering with MIT on this, and I've uh, spent some time there and with them, and, and um, my team's working closely there with that. And, and it's really exciting to see that we could design for not only humans, but also um, autonomous workforce as well and what right. that looks like. And so uh, it's extremely exciting, and uh, it's ne never a dull moment for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for setting the scene there. I think that gives us a real great idea of what BP is uh, focused on and, and doing. Now, let, let's talk about you as a leader, because there's going to be a lot of people watching today who are either in design leadership like yourself or perhaps aspiring to, to be a leader in design in the future. And, and you've just outlined some of the variety and diversity of work that, that you get to work on. Can, can you give us an idea of specifically what is your day to day? What does Roger do day to day uh, to help and enable uh, your design teams? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question uh, as well. Um, I would say, you know, uh, it's, it's also sometimes can be... Um, you know, uh, different for every single design leader and designer. So, you know, I, I, I no, by no means think that what I do uh, is is anywhere as good as everyone else does. But, but, it, but I at least uh, try to to keep um, a focus on, on on a certain amount of things. And there's probably six things that I find myself doing every single day, and that is to organize, operationalize, optimize, mobilize, socialize, and event or energize design around the company. And um, and so what that looks like is when you're you know, organizing design. I mean, there's there's so much that has to go along with that. Like, where are all, where is all the design? When I first got here, um, being the first perm person around this, I had to understand where where are all the teams? What's everybody doing? And 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 how's that manifesting in in the world? And then, you know, how do we bring that together? Um, how do we build a, a community around that? How do we build um, off of you know uh, uh, the, the you know the, the great work that's been there and, and create a you know a design culture, a design guild, and a design practice, um, and a design discipline. And so there's an organized piece. And, uh, and then there's how do you operationalize that? We have an incredible design ops team. And so just being able to operationalize everything that we do, uh, not just from um, how, we, uh, you know, how we set up design but how, uh, you know, in the sense of delivery, but, but uh, you know, budgets and contracts and working with partners and vendors and third parties and getting into the weeds of um, making sure that we work closely with our talent teams to attract the right talents and, um, and have the right process for onboarding and even pre-board. Uh, what happens in, during this stage when somebody gets an offer to when they actually come into the company, and especially in the UK, Russ, as you know, it could be anywhere between three to six months. So, so we want to make sure that that pre-boarding experience is just as exciting and delightful as the onboarding experience is, and, so, and, and on and on. And so that's a, a big part of what we do in an operational aspect. But then we move into... Um, um, operationalizing and optimizing, right? So how do we really make sure that we are efficient? And even though we have a good budget, we are making sure that we bring the right value to the company and we measure it with OKRs and KPIs and uh, we're able to put you know um, numbers to what we do and make sure that we keep within a certain cost frame and be conscious because we need to have empathy not just for our uh, our users and our customers and our team, but also for our business and the leaders that are, that are running this business, including our finance people. Um, and then to mobilize that, how do we mobilize that and scale it into all the squads and everything that we're doing? Um, you know, and so operationalizing, optimizing, mobilizing, socializing, how do we get that message out, working with all of our stakeholders to understand what design is, the value of design, but, uh, but even beyond in moments like this, um, and then around our company and then energizing, how do we energize our teams to keep doing this over and over and over again? So this is something that I do and my team does every single day. But more importantly, um, what I do uh, daily can't be done without all the um, people around me. Uh, I'm not alone. Uh, there's no way as a leader that we would be here where I'm standing right now with all the things that we've accomplished. And there's no way we'll get to where we need to get to in design without all the people um, that have helped us get here and those that are helping us take it forward. So I, I feel very fortunate to have not only such a great team, but really great leaders and stakeholders and, and partners in all that we do.
That's awesome. And and did I detect in there there was an animal based acronym for uh, what you just uh, outlined with your M O O S E? It sounded. I think I caught that there. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually triple O. So it's yeah, but it is yeah. We talk. We call it moose here. Yes. Yeah, so there is. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a whole thing to that, and we've kind of built some structure around it. But yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing to think that uh, you know some of the things that we do on a daily basis can actually be turned into something that's repeatable. And uh, yeah. but 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 one thing that's you know something that you can't always manufacture is the authenticity and the and the passion of being able to do this for real for people and uh, for customers and really put them at the center and i think we um i think that's really our biggest focus that we try to do every day is it's not just about what we actually deliver and the designs that we create and the tech that we use but it's how we reach um the people that we do that for and the people that we do that with and that's really important to to me and to our team well, we, we've really enjoyed working with you over the last couple of years. You've been a great Zeppelin customer of ours, and we really appreciate uh, you investing in us and, and spending time working with our teams as well. And um, as you've started to use Zeppelin at scale and you've operationalized, as, as we talked about, hundreds of designers and, and significant numbers of, of people across the organization, in what ways has Zeppelin helped uh, your organization the most? I'm, I'm really keen, keen to hear this. Yeah, no, that's great, and and I'm so again so honored to be able to uh, to be here with you to speak um, not only with you about some of these things that we're doing, but also about the the great things that Zeppelin's done, um, you know, uh, for us and with our with this company. But even my journey in design, um, you know, years back when uh, I started finding out about Zeppelin, I I uh, was excited to see the capabilities of that and uh, tool and be able to not just um, see it as a, as a tool. It became part of our ecosystem. Um, it became part of our ethos. Um, we didn't use Zeppelin just as as a utility to um, quote unquote hand off to a developer or even handshake with the developer. I know that's some of the vernacular, but we did it more to, to be um, a partner so that we would literally be holding hands through this whole entire process. They would be you know, working with us, we'd be working with them and even our stakeholders, right? Um, we've seen the, the, the power of Zeppelin as a presentation tool as much as it is a place to house uh, some of our, our, our uh, views that we have of our screens, but also to be able to actually see results and delivery too. Um, so there's a myriad of ways that we get to be creative with it and show, but, but to give you kind of an interesting example l- lately, uh, again, you know, using just a very close number, but not, but a rough number, uh, um, is that, uh, one of our, you know, uh, uh, people that lead our, you know, our, one of our biggest, you know, exciting areas of, of design is just spent time trying to get through, um, you know, looking at some of the things that we're doing with design and how we're using our design system there. And he reviewed over 3000 different, um, uh, design projects and things and files within that. And, um, uh, personally it was crazy. Wow. Uh, and, and Zeppelin helped us do that. So, um, and quickly and efficiently and able to go in there as well as keeping things secure at the same time. That's been a real big part of things. So yeah, there's so many different, uh, benefits and aspects uh, that has helped us not only here, but really helped me at other teams that I've led at other companies as well. Well, and, and I think the key part of this that, that I'm hearing is it's, it's not just the design team that's working in Zeppelin. Can, can you give us a, an idea of what the structure of your BP delivery organization looks like? Product, design, engineering, can you just help us to, to understand the structure there? Yeah, yeah. So there, so there may be, um, it's interesting, uh, Zeppelin projects that have hundreds of people on it. Uh, they, so there's people that need them because we, we have it set up for viewing something and they, a lot of people need to see, weigh in. Um, it's a very high profile um, uh, aspect with m- multiple different layers that um, uh, to to that particular product, and people need to see. Uh, so so they're in there just to view. Um, we have it there where stakeholders are in there to comment, um, to give feedback. Um, there's. Um, and different things that Zeppelin allows us to do by um, taking direct links, not only from the uh, you know from from uh, the the sections, but also from the screens themselves directly into um, what you might some companies might use as Jira or ADO or whatever, and right. so developers can get that right there, and those direct links become very very uh, in, uh, instrumental. But the tags have been super important for us, being able to filter uh, the designs when we need it, and so it's a really quick thing. So devs are in there, you know, you see architects, uh, you see um, you know. Obviously, stakeholders, business leaders, and business uh, BAs, business people, um, and now we have you know obviously business designers rising in the org to begin to do that. But um, yeah. but yeah, of course, you know our design community in a myriad of ways, and it might just not just be designers that are touching the pixels, right? So you may have a product designer who's working on UI, but you also might have a service designer that needs to understand well how are all these designs and all these products tying together, and so they're working on a large service design blueprint, and so. 
Um, so, the, you know, these, these designs have helped them, um, you know, uh, see something that they hadn't been able to see, especially through flows and, and journeys and things like that as well. So there's lots of things that, um, that we can do with it. But, but again, so many different types of personas, if you will, that, that are in and out of um, our project uh, boards and all of our different designs. Awesome. Now, you've talked a little bit about the scaling effort that you've been through. You've been at BP for almost three years now. I think your anniversary is right around the corner. Yeah. You've gone through a terrific journey. Let, let's fast forward in time. Where do you imagine your organization and BP as a design organization will be in 18 to 24 months time? I think... Um... One of the things that we look at when we see that is that, you know, um, we look back at all the things that we've done so far, and like I mentioned earlier, but we know how much probably we need to do, right? And yeah. one of the things that I've found um, that's been really dear and near to my heart, but also some of the ethos of our of our team and, and kind of how I've hopefully helped build some of that culture here is that um, we're always learning to lead and leading to learn. You know, and, uh, you know, uh, every one of us can be lear learners or leaders at any given time. And we have that learning mentality, but also we're all looking to lead. And, and anybody, uh, even our interns that come in, we're hoping, you know, lead us in some way or another. And to do that, um, uh, you know, coupled with learning, we believe that we're on that journey of learning. We also want our company to learn as well. And that's a big part of what we do is, is, um, is you know, education and design and design education. We even have somebody dedicated to that um, and a couple of dedicated areas like uh, some of our newer areas like inclusive design focused uh, solely on accessibility and inclusivity and, and uh, equity and so forth. So uh, which is which is amazing to have um, that as a focus of design. Uh, so not only are we focused on sustainability and how we actually also deliver our products, but also inclusive and um, and also edu and education around all that. But uh, but we've grown quite a bit, um, and you know we've seen numbers change over time and over the course of twelve months. Again, just rough numbers. You know we may have jumped from um, you know eight hundred to eleven hundred, thirteen hundred plus designers uh, just in a short amount of time that have been onboarded just to our design system alone. And so to keep up with that scale, um, you know we've we've tried to build a rigorous program around how we educate, how we onboard, um, uh, of course educate perm designers onboard. Even though people that are third parties, we can't necessarily educate them, but we can we can work with them to get up and running on our systems and our design system and how we do design, of course, um, in that frame. But, but I think more importantly, one of the things that I realized was the, the journey that we've been on and where we're headed as it relates to, uh, I think, almost like phases of understanding of what design is here and, and then where we're headed. So, so Russ, maybe, maybe another way to, de to answer your question or describe it is that when I first came in, uh, people were you know, glad that, I guess, design was coming in and uh, you know, I'm sure... They, they, and everybody's really nice, but they had questions, especially in the executive levels of uh, questions like, what is design? Uh, right. What do you mean by design? Uh, you know, my, like I mentioned my father earlier, he was a mechanical engineer for his life. Yeah, he did design, uh, just a different type of design. So we had to explain that, right? Around, or I did. I had to explain, you know, what is digital design and user experience and UX and UI? And they're like, what's the difference between that? And they were like, what's the difference between product design and service design? And what's the difference between, um, you know, how, uh, you know, design uh, could be utilized at the front uh, of the equation and or, or instead of the end and they're like how do we get designers now to be at the front in the strategy and the design thinking and we set up our own design thinking framework and practice and so um and then they begin to ask well how do we um uh, how do we pay for designers, right? And so, and and how do we get more designers? And that was really cool. Um, I think we're in a part of the uh, journey that's changing now. Or they're asking, how do we get design Im embedded into the squads more and into the products uh, even deeper? And so that's really cool. But that's not where we want to stay. It's where we've come to, but it's not where we mm -hmm. want to stay. Uh, the hopes and goal is over the next 18 to 24 months, uh, maybe by 24 months, um, people hopefully won't be asking what is design anymore. Because that education that we, uh, a team that we're building and the education that we're building around design is working, and they already know what design is. And they're not asking, can we get designers? Uh, because they're already embedded everywhere, um, or as many places that can be. I think what they hopefully are asking in the next 18 to 24 months is something different. And that is, what do we design next together? And that is what we're hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for, that partnership of really being able to be that design-led, uh, customer-centric type company that I know that we are on the journey to be, especially as we transition from being an international oil company, an IOC, to an IEC, which is an integrated energy company, and really making that transition um, to put people and planet on equal footing. 
Now, I think we've got time for one final question. I just want to pick up on something that you said a moment ago about the value of design. Now, with the market the way it is at the moment, with re the recession and, and slowdown in the economy, I'm imagining that there's going to be a lot of folks out there who are having to justify uh, the value of design and, and justify spending money and, and probably going to have to do more with less. What advice do you have for people who are facing that situation at the moment? Yeah, so there's um, you know a lot of things that we're doing around the value of design and how we uh, measure our designs. Uh, we're putting in place the KPIs and OKRs and trying to tether that to what the business needs just as much as we know what our customers need. And uh, but I would say you know when you really look at it, it's not easy. Uh, it's it, we're on a journey too, and being able to justify. Uh, what we do and why we need research and why we need more investments and why we need more design. Uh, it's not, um, it's not something for the faint of hearts, but, um, and we're all in that together. Um, so there's not necessarily, I don't think from, at least from my perspective, a perfect answer. Uh, but there are things that we can do, um, to, to help really elevate the value of design. And that's, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, keeping in mind that there's also finances involved and in being able to somehow show that we're making a difference financially, uh, where we're, our designs could be bringing in revenue and they can also be you know potentially you know saving time and costs for the for the company because of the you know more streamlined elevated user experiences and so forth but i think there's something bigger right and our designers are on a mission uh they're they're um part of a new breed i think of designers that are looking at how we can make an impact in our world and our planet not just for our generation but generations to come when we're no longer here and it's not easy um, it's, it's, um, it's probably not, uh, well known and, and it's new of how to do it. Uh, but, um, but we're facing as a world, this, um, uh, uh, this, this massive energy, uh, trilemma where, you know, it's not just about getting energy. It's about getting energy that's secure, um, energy that's sustainable, um, and, 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 uh, affordable. And, uh, we, we know that that's a big thing. And how do we really leverage our design superpowers to help if, if, if we can, and it's not just going to take our company. It's really going to take all these companies. We work with so many different organizations around the globe that people don't even know about. And, uh, it's not just going to take us as a company or, or even other companies. It's going to take all industries and really all of us as a globe. And, uh, I feel like it's not just me standing here or our design team. It's the whole entire design community with us to help a company like this transition and all these companies transition so that we can help um, the future generations and uh, and hopefully solve these challenges and, and do that together. So so um, if, if anybody's to say, what kind of value could you bring? Sure, there is a business and, and uh, you know, uh, ho hopefully profit, but also, you know, um, can we do this for uh, our people and, and people of the world and, and our planet? Excellent. Thank you. Roger, we've run out of time, but thank you so much for being with us today. We really do appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate being here too, Russ. And um, just if anybody's out there and they are excited about what we're doing, we are hiring. Uh, we're building an amazing team and continuing to build. And if you are on a mission as well as we are to help um, put people and planet on equal footing, uh, come join us and help us harness human experience design to do that very thing. Fantastic. Everyone, thank you for spending time with Roger and I today. It's been great to uh, have you here. Hope you enjoy the rest of Harmony and we'll see you all soon.